Hi everyone, this is a sample lesson from a larger course. If you're interested in the full course, check out the link in the description below. In this lesson, we're going to set up some fluids in our scene. So we're going to create some smoke. I'm going to start off in this scene, which is just after we've done the lighting. But you can use any scene as long as it's in the right place, because I'm going to show you how to export the fluid after you've simulated it and cached it. So hopefully you've watched the beginner's tutorials first, the uh, the basics first. And so now we can just go ahead and put them in here. So let's go ahead and go to the effects menu and fluids. fluids. I'm going to create a 3D container. Let's just reset the option so, they were, so that we're all on the same page. And I'm just going to change this to a volume just so that we can see a bit more fluid emitting. So I'm going to say apply. Okay, so now we can see there's our fluid container there and our emitter, which is a cube there. So let's just go ahead and change that. Uh, if we just scroll down, I've just selected the emitter here. If we scroll down to the shape of it, so it will be in volume emitter attributes. Just change that to a sphere. Okay, you can see it changed there. And by default, it's it's emitting in all directions. So what we want to do is we change this emission speed attribute to replace and then we can turn on these things. So let's just turn on, for example, uh, along axes. So we can see this arrow here. I'm going to bring that over here, rotate it so it's pointing in the right direction. Okay, so let me just go to a perspective here. Okay, we can always adjust this later, so don't worry about it too much. Just make sure it's kind of pointing in the right direction. And the camera, if you look at it from the camera's point of view, the shot cam, if you have it facing that way, it's going to kind of come out quite far. So I'm just going to point it to the right a little bit like this, just cheat it a little bit so that it's kind of coming up this way so it looks nice from the camera's point of view. Okay, and what we're going to do is go to fluid and we're going to turn on auto resize which is going to help the speed of course so we turn on auto resize and then we'll just rewind and let's play this okay let's just make sure that we can see some fluids here we can it's not much to be seen we can try and isolate this and have a look and just change the background color to by using Alt B. So there you go, there's the fluid. Okay, so you can see it's pretty low resolution. So we're gonna go into the fluid and just go up to the base resolution. And I'm just gonna change that to around 85. And we'll see, that's a bit better, as you can see. Okay, let's just, let's turn the isolate off here. And I'm just going to turn off the image plane here so we can see this a bit better. So if we go to the dome light and just hide that. And so now we can see the background and then I'm just going to turn off the image plane as well by pressing this button, image plane button. And we, there we go. So that's a lot easier to see now. So you can see it's pumping out that exhaust there. So now we just need to adjust some parameters in here for the turbulence. So we're going to turn on some turbulence in, in the emitter. So we're going to go to the emitter and we'll go to the fluid emission turbulence here. I'll just show you where that is inside the fluid attributes. Uh, it's a bit hidden away, which is a bit annoying, but there you go. So fluid attributes and fluid emission turbulence. And we'll just turn that up. And if you remember, that just means that it's going to puff rather than being a constant amount, it's going to sort of vary the amount that it puffs out. Okay, so we're just going to change the speed as well, just to make that a bit faster as well, the, the amount that it puffs out. So now you can see it's sort of puffing that smoke out rather than just doing a constant amount, which is good. Okay, and then what we can do is add some turbulence to this. So by the way, 
So at the moment, all it's doing is varying the amount that it's pumping out, but it's not actually moving it around once it's out. So we can do that either using a field or we can use the built-in turbulence parameter inside the fluid. So if we go to the fluid container, this is a bit easier. So if you can do it this way, it's a nice way to do it. You just go to content details and inside there you'll find a bunch of attributes for the dynamic simulation. So uh, in this case we're doing velocity, turbulence and density and if you're simulating temperature and fuel you can also go into those sections but we don't need to go into those sections. So in this case like you've got different things here. So if you remember me talking about buoyancy and the reason that it goes up is because of buoyancy you can actually turn that down so you can actually change that to zero and you'll see that it just kind of pumps it out rather than coming upwards and that's what buoyancy does there so that's where you would turn that up and then you've got the scale of the density here you can actually make it a bit a bit more solid if you want to i'm just going to leave that on the default there okay but what we want to do is we want to go into the turbulence and just change the strength here and this is quite sensitive so you just want to test it so i'm just going to turn it up a little bit and then we'll just change and have a look so now you can see we've got some nice swirling behavior. Okay, and I think the the swirling is quite big at the moment, so we're just going to change the frequency here so that we have more kind of swirling. Okay, so you can see the difference that makes. And the amount that it changes is based on the speed. So if you wanted that to swirl around at a faster rate, you can actually change the speed. So let's just have a look at this. So you should see a difference here. So now you can see it's actually changing, which is quite nice here. So I'm going to leave it on two. You can actually pump, you can put a bigger number in there as well if you want to. I think it might be going quite fast, it might be pushing it out quite fast, so I'm just going to slow that down a little bit because the speed that we had is in the emission speed attributes. So we've actually got a speed along axis at 10, so I'm just going to change that to 5 so it doesn't come out as far and see what that looks like. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay, and then I'm just going to go a little bit upwards. So I'm just going to rotate this emitter a little bit upwards. Let me show you another turbulent attribute that you can turn on, which will give you uh, some more interesting behavior here and that's that's inside the fluid container and it's in velocity and it's got this thing called swirl which is really useful and it, it just gives you that kind of swirling pattern you've got to use this subtly otherwise it looks a bit cg but if you turn that up a bit you're going to start to get that swirling that you get with fluid behavior i will just turn it up just so you can see a bit more So as you, you can see it's just breaking up that that noise that was happening and just making it kind of swirl a little bit. Okay, so we've got a decent start to our fluid simulation. And what we need to do is have a look at this in real time so that we can actually see the speed at uh, when it actually plays back. So let's do a play blast. I'm just going to right click here and say play blast options. And then we'll just use the defaults. I'm just going to say reset just to use, lose the defaults. If you're on a PC, you might want to change this to QuickTime and then choose H.264 or Photo JPEG as the encoder. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it on the default. And you can see this is a default for the Mac. And I'm just going to play Blast. So that's just going to make a video for us and play it back in real time. You'll notice that it slows down as it goes through because there's more and more stuff to calculate. There's more and more of these voxels to calculate. So therefore, it's going to take longer to calculate. Okay, let's give it a play. 
It's a bit tiny, but there you go. So it's actually not a bad speed, but it seems to be speeding up as it goes through. So it's a bit slow there, and then it kind of starts to kick in and everything starts to become turbulent. So I'm quite happy with that at the moment, but we'll adjust a few parameters in the next lesson.